Oh, hey, I'm live. I have never done this before, so forgive me um, if I'm a little bit of a noob. My name is Kira McGill. I am uh, an ADHD coach now, but that's not what I'm talking about today. Today I'm talking about my diagnosis uh, that happened just last year, what I learned, what I took away, and what that, what's something that you should look out for if you suspect you might have uh, ADHD. The one thing I'll say at the top is that it's a spectrum disorder, so you might be a little ADHD-ish, or you might be a lot. Um, and there's really no sort of like distinction or hard line there. So if you suspect you have it, get checked out. Um, you can try some assessments online just to sort of uh, satiate your curiosity. But if you really want a diagnosis, then um, you'll have to go to uh, either a, psychi a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Uh, that tests for these sort of things. And make sure that you go to somebody who's got some experience and knowledge of ADHD, because the first takeaway I'm gonna give you is that the majority of health professionals really don't know that much about ADHD, which is fine. It's, uh, it's a big growing learning, or it's a growing field, and more and more people are getting diagnosed every day. So to keep this um, sort of on the up and up and uh, organized, because with ADHD, that's kind of hard for me. <laughs> Uh, the top things I have learned about ADHD is something I'm going to cover, but I'll do that at the end. I'll talk about um, why, how I was diagnosed and why I thought I should get diagnosed um, and what I did about it and what I'm doing about it now. So let's start with the diagnosis. Um, much Like much of uh, the rest of the world, during the pandemic, uh, I lost a lot of my normal coping mechanisms and structure for how to adult. And uh, that all kind of came to a smashing halt uh, during the pandemic. And I realized then that um, the structures that I had in my life were really kind of keeping me going. You know, I had a certain time I had to be up and a certain place I had to be. And um, just there was a, a schedule of life. And I lost that when uh, the pandemic happened. And as I lost that, I started to notice that I was just spiraling. I couldn't get anything done. I couldn't remember to do things. My memory was going. So I will say it's partly pandemic. It's also partly hormonal because if you're at midlife and um, your estrogen levels are starting to drop, estrogen has a lot to do with brain function. So just generally, um, all of these things were colliding along with a lot of life stress given that there was a global pandemic. So at that point, I just I had learned from a few different people about some of the characteristics of ADHD, which is why I'm also sharing it because I think that um, you know when you hear from other people that have been diagnosed and it sounds so familiar, it's a part relief and part curiosity when you say, "Oh my gosh, me too." Uh, so that drove me to get a diagnosis with. Um, a neuropsychologist who did uh, ADHD testing specifically. And that was a bit of a, a like a wait and a bit of a, a process, I will say. Uh, my insurance covered all of it here in the US. Um, some insurances do, some don't. And uh, if you're in a different country, you'd have to look into your particular process. But generally, if you wanna get um, a speedier diagnosis, sometimes you would have to you know pay for that. Um, and it, depends on you know what country you're in and who you're working with but at any rate i got my diagnosis and um i will say that when i got it and i understood my processing um like the way i process my brain processing functionality what um where the areas of my uh adhd really show up it was a like it was a revelation to me. Uh, I took a, a, like a minute to be very sad, not because I had ADHD, that's neither here nor there, um, but because I didn't know it for the majority of my life. And things could have been a lot different, things could have been a lot easier, but it's all in the past. I don't like to dwell on the past. So I gave myself a little bit of space to um, feel a moment of feels. And then I moved on from there. And I promised myself that with this diagnosis, I was really going to commit to living my best, best ADHD life, whatever that meant. And at that time, I didn't know what it meant because I didn't know anything about ADHD. <laughs> so from that time, I have learned a lot. And it's really been uh, a bit of a 
a transformation for me because what I have always done throughout my entire life is sort of shift between a bunch of different interests in psychology and personal development and coaching and fitness and spirituality. And, uh, you know, I've got certifications up the wazoo in terms of like coaching, uh, fitness, yoga, and then I've got a master's and undergrad in psychology. And I never quite knew how those pieces fit together and I used to really beat myself up for not having one lane or knowing what my lane was. I had like a super highway of interests and when I got my diagnosis it was really the sort of moment where I realized okay all of these things are part and parcel of who I am because um because well actually should I say sorry this is live so you know you're getting me off the cuff here um, with the knowledge of like all of these various different interests, knowing that my ADHD brain was not um, somewhere where I could fit my interests and knowledge and perspective into a little box, right? And compartmentalize it. I knew I had to embrace all of these things and pull together my strengths and my interests and move them forward that way um, as an interest-driven perspective. Because the one thing I learned right away and throughout my coach training is that people with ADHD have interest-driven brains. We don't have a deficit of attention. We have um, a different way of regulating our attention around things. So if something is uninteresting to us, we literally can't pay attention to it because our prefrontal cortex just does not light up and do what it needs to do for us to process information. But if we find something that we're interested in, like the brain just goes, hey, that's I'm all about that. So when I realized that I took all of these different pieces of my life and my interest and my training and I pulled them together into what I do now, which is ADHD coaching or well-being coaching for the chronically distracted. So I don't necessarily just coach ADHD folks, but I have that additional um, training and context in my toolbox. So a lot of the people that come to me are feeling a little ADD-ish in some way or another, and I help them get clarity on what they need, what they want, and how to move forward in a way that works from that for them and their interest-driven brain. I will say I think most people have interest-driven brains. Most of us don't really have um, an easy time going through things that we are not interested in. But when you have a neurotypical brain, which is the non-ADHD brain, neurodiversity is ADHD, neurotypical is not ADHD. Um, when you have a neurotypical brain, you can sometimes get, you can usually get yourself to do things that you aren't interested in because you have the brain function that it lights up the prefrontal, prefrontal cortex when you need to take action on something. For people with ADHD, sometimes getting started or transitioning from one thing to another or follow through and finishing things can be very difficult because there's a huge cognitive load that's required, even if it's something that we're interested in. When we get down to the minutia, it can sometimes get difficult depending on how our brain works. So learning all of that made me realize that coaching and helping other people with the same issue that I have gone through was for me like a culmination and the best work that I could bring to this world. And uh, I have to say the whole process of coaching, being coached, learning to become a coach has been transformational for me on so many levels. I still forget things. I still, uh, you know, struggle here and there with wanting to do too many things. But now I have the tools to really hone myself in and understand that I have a divergent thought process that needs to kind of come together and um, focus to follow through. And I've got tons of resources around that. And really, I'm coming online to live today to share this with you because if you find yourself uh, either chronically distracted or with an ADHD diagnosis, somewhere in the middle of midlife, if you will, uh, then I'm here to help. And I've got so much that I wanna share and I'm really excited to move forward in this domain. I have been on YouTube talking about food and fitness and fitness transformation over 40 for a long time. And that is not going away because I will say fitness and just exercise in general is the best thing you can do for your brain. Uh, aside from uh, if you have ADHD getting medicated, if you are just a little ADD-ish, then definitely working out and finding like a fitness routine is going to help you stay focused. So I'm still gonna talk about all of those things, but I'm really folding in this um, content around 
focus, follow through, um, finding your unique strengths, finding ways of doing things that work uniquely for you. Uh, if that sounds like you, then stick around, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, introduce yourself. I would love to hear, you know, if you have ADHD or if you suspect you have ADHD and how it presents for you. Uh, and if, if you want to explore my coaching offering, you, I'll put a link below, but I just would love for you to stick around so we can talk all things distraction and how to get over it here on this channel. So I hope you guys have a great day and I will see See you in the next video. Now I'm going to put on my glasses because <laughs> I have no idea how to turn this thing on.